Savvy Business Radio runs in syndication on eight AM FM stations nationwide, including iHeartRadio and six podcasting platforms. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or to become a guest and find out how we can help you get your message out in a bigger way, call 732-474-7375 or email Christina at SavvyBusinessRadio.com. Our guest today is Sharelle Lands, strategist, philanthropist, mother, writer, and professional. Today, Sharelle shares her latest book, Leading with Feet, Making Intentional Steps to Live Out Your Best. Sharelle will share some of her tips on how creating movement to pursue your goals can not only help you achieve them, but execute them. Find out more about Sherelle and get her book today at leadingwithfeetbook.com. Hi, Sherelle. Welcome to Savvy Business Radio. How are you this evening? I'm doing great, Christina. And how are you? I'm doing fabulous. I'm grateful we could get together. Uh, you're going to get together with us and your interview will air in the beginning of the year. Awesome topic we're going to talk about. And that comes from your book, Leading with Feet, Making Intentional Steps to Living Out Your Best. And I think this is such a great subject because we've had a lot of guests on and a lot of people tell me, hey, I have a lot of gifts and talents and passions, but I'm never able to get it out there in a way I want. But you've written a book to show people how they can, regardless of their situation, whether they are a mom or they you know, have a lot going on their plate, it's still possible to create your dream life. So before we go to sharing all of that, share with your audience a little bit about your background, what brought you to where you are today? Yeah, sure. So absolutely. So I am actually an industrial engineer. And in my job and in my role, I do a lot of uh, what I call making it happen from the standpoint <laughs> of strategic development. And so I do it on the scale of a corporation. And what I do is essentially work with the marketers and the team in terms of, of, of concept development. So the marketers come up with a concept, and what I do is help actually bring the concept into life with identifying the tentacles and, and um, bringing the teams together to manifest those things. And so I've been doing that for um, a little over, I think I'm 13 years, let me say 2018, 2008, wow. nine, nine years, sorry. Um, and um, so I've been doing that for, for a little bit now. And the book actually came about when I hit a rock in life and I decided to transform or, tra or use the same exact energy that I was using for my work practice at home to manifest my own dream. And um, that's kind of how I got started with it and then challenged myself to doing a half marathon. Ooh, nice. And do you have the desire to go for the full Monty uh, in the near future? I do. I do. So it's on my list of things to do in 2018. And I want to try a flat surface. Uh, <laughs> just to oh. get my feet in the area. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I, I can imagine if you're going up hills and mountains, it's a lot more tenuous on your body than doing it on a flat surface. Where do you where do you currently run out of? So out of Nashville, Tennessee. And I, uh, I, I just did a half uh, two weekends ago in Savannah. Mm -hmm. So I did the rock and roll, rock and roll in Savannah, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I do it for fun. And I've also done triathlon as well. Wow. And um, that was exciting. And <laughs> I honestly, Christina, it was easier to do the triathlon than it was the half marathon, I think, the first time. All right. Is that, how, how is that possible? Why? Why was it easier? <laughs> <laughs> <That's You> <laughs> Probably because, um, so I overtrained for the triathlon to make sure that when I got through with the swim, you know, it, with, with, uh, with running, if you get tired, you can stop essentially. Mm -hmm. And with the triathlon, when you're, you're in the water, you, you kind of have to finish, um, mm -hmm. or you kind of think and die. Well, yeah. that was what I told myself. <laughs> and so I wanted to make sure that I overtrained so that I would be prepared in the event of the race. Yeah. Always a good thing to be prepared. Now, I'm curious, though, through you being um, an engineer, a strategy engineer, and helping people, having a concept and bring it to fruition, working with a lot of people, have you seen a common pattern to people who are not able to bring an idea or, or a situation to fruition? Yeah, I have, actually. And a lot of it starts in the mind. Um, when, one of the things I've seen is that a lot of people can, you will have an idea, you're like, oh, I really want to do that. But then you get stuck or you get or you stall or deviate from the goal. 
or you get off the train before it comes out of the tunnel, so to speak, and mm. in terms of going through hard times and not really sticking with it and sticking through it. Mm -hmm. And so one of the, the first things I say is, especially to people who have the, some specific ideas, is to recognize that you're powerful and that you're able to accomplish all of the things that you want to go after. Sometimes it just requires a different mindset. Mm -hmm. the, um, the other thing I hear is people say, well, I don't have the money or I don't have the resources. And that, you know, I think is a, a common misconception that we tell ourselves mm -hmm. when it's just a matter of being creative in the space that you have yeah. and that as you create that momentum, mm. you create the space in order to get that, get, get your dreams, your visions going. So it just, it takes being intentional, you yeah. know, hence the word making in, intentional steps um, to, to really get it done and um, exuding the best that you have um, to get it. Mm. Uh, one of the questions I'm often asked is how was I able to write it with my hectic and busy <laughs> lifestyle? And, um, you know, it was, it was, I got creative, Christina. I, um, I invested in tape recorder. I invested in the ease of access on the computer. So, you know, and I found the space that I already, that I already had. So I was in traffic, you know, why not utilize that idle time in a way that was productive? And so I began, um, taking all of my, my, my materials and listening to them and then also dictating, dictating back into the tape recorder and then allowing the tape recorder to transcribe it back into the computer and then I would edit. So I had a process that I used hmm. which still allowed me to maintain my existing lifestyle. Oh. Um, yeah, I love that you're oh, yeah. saying this, Cheryl. Um, this is awesome because I, I found the same thing when I first got started, even before I left corporate and started doing first my consulting business, then Savvy. Each time I said, this is not possible for me to do this. I, I don't have the resources. I don't have the skill or the, the education or whatever it might be that we tell ourselves. Yeah. And, and there are even times I recall, even doing my first event, I put together 15 speakers at a live event in Manhattan with no money in the okay. bank. And wow. uh, but it, was, it was after prayer, and I've mentioned this on the show before, that I had the call to do this. And so I said, okay, I'm just going to do it. And then, as you said, just go forward one step in front of the other. And when you start taking steps, momentum builds and stuff opens up where you find opportunities. You get creative. And for me, one of the things that was interesting is, I don't know about you, Cheryl, but for me, when I started talking to people about it and said, oh, I'm going to do this and, and getting people together, I said, oh, well, maybe – you know, in your prayers, you were called to do it, but in five years, not now. <laughs> yeah. I said, no, yeah. that's not really what I felt, actually. I, I kind of felt yeah. the fool to do it now. Um, did you have that come up for you through through your life and actually through? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, and it's funny you mentioned that because that's actually one of the tips that I leave for the readers in the book, which is, you know, be wary of the naysayers. You want people in your life that are going to add to the, you know, add to your vision, not detract from it um, and still and rob you of your energy. But you got to remember sometimes that the vision that you have might not be for someone else. So they may not be able to see it mm -hmm. as well as you can, you know. And mm -hmm. for me, that was the same thing. People would say, well, how are you going to write a book? You've got all this going on. You're busy corporate professional, single mother, <laughs> you know, and, and just hectic lifestyle. And I said, well, you know, I just, it's something I, if it's something you really want to do, you find a way to make it happen. You become creative within, within, you know, your own space. And lo and behold, you know, the same thing. Now people are saying, wow, well, how were you able to do that? It was just, you know, yeah. I, I believe that I could. And it started there. I, I can't, you know, like I stress it enough between that and, and prayer. Um, yeah. But the the nick that you have to have the resources or the other thing that people will do is say that it has to be perfect before you get started. And, no. you know, those are the things that, it, it, no, right, exactly. It, you mm -hmm. don't have to be. It's never perfect. No, I, but, you know, it's a funny, this idea of perfection. I, I had it in my 20s and early 30s, this idea that I had to be perfect. And I was very miserable at work. I, I kept trying to reach this yeah. lucid perfect. But, you know, right when you mm -hmm. get to the idea of close to perfect, you realize you could do it even better. Oh, crap, yeah. I'm still not perfect. Uh, and so if you come at, 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 at it from a different perspective, this, this is an ongoing, wonderful journey, and I don't need to be exactly. perfect, quote, unquote. I can just get better and better each day. 
Right. Mm-hmm. You know, to that point, Christine, it's like if you think about a child when they're in their infancy stages, they don't go immediately from the belly to running. It's mm-hmm. a process. Sometimes you, re, you know, regress in order to make progress. And that, to your point, is a part of the journey. It's a part of the process. Mm-hmm. And recognizing that, you know, you have to build the muscle memory. You don't just get it the first time. But muscle memory requires depth. It requires training in order to build. Yes. And I got something else that you mentioned earlier, and you just brought it up right now again, and that is there's a process, there's a system. You you found a system that worked within your lifestyle, which is, you know, I'm going to turn on my recorder while I drive and kill, you know, use this time efficiently to yeah. write this book. And and I went through last year something similar where I decided I wanted to get back in shape. But I said to myself, with this I'm doing here and I'm consulting in the city, there's no way I can go to the gym. It's just not possible. <laughs> How am I going to add it in? And and I was able to add it in. And it's just looking at your lifestyle, you said, getting creative and finding processes and systems to work within your lifestyle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is even, you know, taking out some of the waste that you might already have, right, within your existing day. So, mm-hmm. and like, whether it be um, um, using cans while you're cooking and you to do leg, leg bends or curls or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, it's just a matter to your point that we that we we find it. We really do. We find it. And then also scheduling your own time. We have um, a tendency to allow other people fill our calendars with things that they would like for us to do. But in the same way, finding, you know, mm-hmm. not even finding the time, but really scheduling our own time for the things that we want to go after and do is important. Hmm. So. Sherelle, how's it work for you? Do you schedule every moment or when someone comes into your space and says, hey, I need you to do something, do you pencil them in? How does it work in your life? I prioritize it. And okay. so it depends on the respective ask that is that is um, coming forth and, and what it's in regard to. If it's something that can be delegated, mm-hmm. then, you know, I, I delegate. If it's okay, any I pretty much, I'll, I'll be honest with you, mm-hmm. anything that comes up from my son is automatically on my calendar and (laughs) move other things around um, to make sure that um, that I have the the breadth and bandwidth for him but I start off with a list of what's important to me Mm -hmm. and then I I put things on on the basis of whether or not they're aligned with the priorities for for me which you know obviously faith is very important to me my son is very important to me Mm -hmm. Um, and then some of the goals and things that I have and if it's just in you know a simple ask or whatnot I and try as best as, you know, to delegate. If it's, hey, can you come here? Mm-hmm. Then I, um, I, I put weight to it in terms of whether or not I can. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, I had to learn this, which is being comfortable with saying no, you know, no, I would love to, but I can't. And not spreading myself too thin. I had to mm-hmm. learn that the hard way. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but just being mindful of not taking on, biting off more than I can chew. Mm, that's a very good point. And I'm, I'm guessing as well, when you mentioned you prioritize and you said what, what's most important for me, you also, I'm, I'm guessing from what I'm gathering that you also put forth like here's the direction and, and the end result or direction I want to go in and does this help me get there? Am I, am yes, I understanding? Exactly. Ah. Yes, exactly. Because otherwise you'll find that you divide your time, right? You've, mm-hmm. you've got so much um, within a day. And I even talk about how the construct of managing your time is really um, is a social construct. You can't really manage something that was only intended to be measured. The time, in its sense, in terms of the seconds that actually go around the clock, is just a measurement between moments. Yeah. But what you can manage is your energy. So the other thing I tend to do is um, I schedule things that require my and my call it my um my my brain power Mm -hmm. during my peak time so that I know that I can be most effective during that during those moments and then on my down moments if I'm like um, cooking or or um, cleaning then I'm listening to Mm -hmm. um, I'm listening to tapes or I'm doing things that don't require as much hands-on but still allow me to remain effective Mm, that's awesome. And I recall earlier on in the conversation, you mentioned that mindset is important. And so I've heard of so many people who've had a great dream or a great passion or even a talent that they wanted to get out into the world and they're just not having success at it. Is your mindset really a big portion of why they're not getting the results they want? Absolutely. 
I am a firm believer that if you tell yourself you can, then you're right. And if you tell yourself you can't, you're also <laughs> right in that, you know, you draw the energy for what you believe. And I believe that the world in which we live, people expect us to be who we say we are. Mm. And people expect us to want what we say we want, but mm. we can't expect others to, to know what we want without actually speaking it, commanding it, and moving into it. So it goes back into creating the movement. So you can have an idea and that idea remain dormant mm -hmm. until you begin to move in it. When you, when you have convinced yourself, because it is a process sometimes of, going, of convincing yourself mm -hmm. that you're worth going after your dreams or your ambitions or your goals, you start developing the, the um, tenacity to go after it. You start mm -hmm. researching connecting with people who are in the field that you're in, you begin to walk towards it, move towards it, create mm -hmm. momentum towards it. Um, but the mindset, if you don't believe that you can have it, the minute that you start moving and something shifts, you'll likely abandon or abort that dream. But wow. when you say, no, this is something that I know is for me, it, you, you find the way to navigate through it. Okay. What was that you used before? Did you say speak it, move, and create? What was those three? It, it was like a, it looked, it sounded like a recipe there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you, you speak, you, you definitely want to speak it into existence, right? You have to believe for yourself that you're, you're worth after. Then you have to put momentum movement towards it because that's what actually begins to create the, um, the momentum towards it. And that helps to create the space in which you need in order to, to keep it going. Wow. even when you feel like you want to let it go. And, and that is so such an important point to make because there will be hard times. Whatever you're getting started in, there will be times where you want to fall off the wagon and just say, this is just too hard. And there was yeah. a guy on we've had on, oh my gosh, probably four years ago now, he did broke five world records. And he has yeah. severe health issues. And uh, he was told he couldn't do what he wanted to do, but he did. And now he travels the, the whole world and uh, actually tells people what he did. And, uh, and they're like, oh, how could you do that? And he's like, you know what? The only thing different between me and most people is that I didn't give up. And he said, there are so yeah. many times you can throw in the towel and say, this is too hard. But if you want it yeah. bad enough, and you know, as you said, if you keep your mindset focused on it and don't let negative thoughts come take you off the, the wagon, as it were, um, you can create it. It's not going to be an easy process, though. I mean, Rome was not built in a day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep, you're absolutely right. But it was built. It was built. That's right. Um, and that vision came to life, to your point. There was a blueprint that went in. There were materials that were needed that were sought. Mm -hmm. It was likely a team that put it together. But yes, um, and that's the same exact thing, which is mm -hmm. you, if you've got it in your mind, first thing I always say is, and you, and you have convinced yourself, write it down, put it up, stick it around you, mm -hmm. find a friend that can hold you accountable to your dream, to your goal to remind you when you go through those rough seasons of why you're doing what you're doing and that can help continue to push you along. Um, we exist in a world together, mm -hmm. you know, and when you find that right person who can help you in terms of, of reminding you of your baby yeah. that you want to birth, you keep pushing towards it and recognizing to your point that it's, it's not a linear process. Mm -hmm. Success is not a linear process. And sometimes it's more like a, a tangled string or, you know, a windy mm -hmm. road. It's, it goes up, it goes down, it comes, sometimes you have to go backwards in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. But as long as you keep your eyes on where you want to go with every step that you take, commit to learning, commit to creating the, the lesson about the journey along the way. So that if you find yourself in a similar space um, a little later down the road on a different project or a different level, you can remember what, um, what tool you use to bring you through it. Yeah. I love that you mentioned it's not a linear process. And I, I don't know if it's just my perspective, but I've noticed that we sell a lot the myth in our culture of the lotto, you know, winning the lotto and your life will just be perfect. And I think right. that, that whole idea goes into everything and that, oh, one day when we just get a bunch of money in the bank, we're just going to have like the perfect life. If we're a celebrity yeah. someday or we become famous, we'll just have the perfect life. And that does not make a perfect life. And, and yeah. so I, I like that you mentioned that it's really uh, an ongoing journey and it's a fun journey, but it's not a straight line. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and if we tell ourselves that it will be going back to it, it you'll yeah. likely quit. 
or give up on it. Um, or if you're going after it for the wrong reasons, that'll be the same thing because you, the same way that there are seasons that we go through in a year where you're from hot to cold, warm, et cetera, rainy, it's the exact same thing as it relates to your life and your dreams and your ambitions. You know, the difference is you can physically feel the seasons of the earth. Yeah. When you go through the hard times, you know, and the space of creating the uh, bringing your, your dream to life, sometimes those seasons cannot physically be felt because it's it's um, it's um, abstract. You might be working mm-hmm. in an abstract space. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it helps like, you know, and the example I use in the book is about doing a half marathon, which helps you to, to feel physically what you might be experiencing mentally. And making the connection between the two to help you overcome those dreams or those goals um, in life. Wow, that's a great idea. I never thought of putting one part of your life against another to help you on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So well, that- sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's taking the abstract and making it physical. That's something you can feel and it's, it's more tangible in terms of, uh, of, of a measurement. But the exact same thing happens to you mentally. Wow. And for today, anyone listening in who felt that they have a dream in their heart that they've not even attempted to do because they feel it's too, too hard, what would be your top advice for them getting started? So the first thing, again, is to believe that you are recognizing that you have something very unique within, you know, inside of you that is worth birthing to the universe, to the world in which we live, that there is legacy that you have inside of you to give um, Les Brown says that the richest place on earth is the graveyard mm. because that's where you're going to find all of the hopes and dreams that were never fulfilled and books that should have been written were, but never were and inventions that were, you know, could have been conceived but didn't come to view because we were too afraid to actually move in it and we allowed ourselves to become crippled by fear. But if you really ask yourself and look at it, you know, what exactly is fear? That's what I would challenge and say, hmm. what is fear? Is fear really, is it real? Or is it something that we tell ourselves? And if so, why and where did we get that from? Hmm. And if you cross-reference it or look hmm. at exactly what it is you might be afraid of, is it hmm. something that only exists in your mind? And the more comfortable we get with challenging those thoughts to say, well, why can't I? You know, why can't I? Instead of, I can't, why can't I? Um, you'll find that you'll be able to create the depth of space that you need to move into it. If it's on your mind and your heart, um, there's definitely a place in which you can help to bring that concept to life. So yeah. I, would, I would definitely say to your readers is to, to recognize that, you know, there's, there's greatness on the inside of you that is just waiting to come out and you are worth it. It's not just an idea in your head. It's something that can be birthed and manifested. Mm, that is a fabulous, fabulous way to end. Well, before we head on out here, I want you to let everyone know where they can find out more about you and get your book, Leading with Feet. Yes, so Leading with Feet is on Amazon, Books a Million, um, Barnes and Noble. And if you want a personalized copy, you can go to directly to my website, which is www.leadingwithfeetbook.com. And then if you want to catch up with me, send me a send me um an email or say hi, you can reach me on www.sherellelands.com or search for me on any social media feed as Sherelle Lands. You betcha. Well, this has been a fabulous and enlightening talk. And I thank you so much, Sherelle, for coming and sharing your great wisdom today on Savvy Business Radio. Thank you so much for, for allowing me to join, Christina. Savvy Business Radio runs in syndication on eight AM FM stations nationwide, including iHeartRadio, and six podcasting platforms. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or to become a guest and find out how we can help you get your message out in a bigger way, call 732-474-7375 or email Christina at SavvyBusinessRadio.com.